Okay, preparing this session to go Facebook Live. We're streaming to Facebook Live. Nice and early. Very nice. Okay, and we are live. Very nice, a very good evening, everybody. And welcome, if you're already watching here, we are very early right now, it's 7.50. So we're not gonna get started yet. We're gonna st start at eight o'clock. We have two very special guests with us today. We're gonna to give a chance to everybody to join us here in this group or in this, uh, in this uh, Cornerstone page, special Cornerstone page tonight. So. Hello. Yao Long is there, Yin Peng, are you also there? Yes, I am, hi. Hi, okay. Hi, so everyone. We are live. Let's give a few minutes to the people to join the session because we're still a little early. Most people know that we are going live only at eight. So let's give them a few minutes. Like I said, we have a very special uh, show to, uh, tonight. We will be talking with uh, Mr. Wong Yao Long and with Ying Peng. Special title on how we build productive agents. Definitely don't want to miss this one, folks, because it's all going to be about productive and performing agents. So make sure you share this to whoever you want to share this in your page, in your groups. And uh, because this is all going to be public, so you can share it in every single page that you want. Uh, many people of Cornerstone will be here, but if you're not a member of Cornerstone, still we welcome you to have a look here because this is all going to be about the business of real estate agencies. How do we build productive agents? So slowly people are coming in, not many people yet because we're still a little early. So let's give it a few minutes before everybody is in. So how sure. are you along? Everything okay? I'm good, but I, I still cannot see the notification from my Facebook, right? The live. Are you able to go in Jinping? Mm -hmm. Yes, I can see it. You can see it, huh? Okay, let me see. Mm -hmm. Maybe you uh, refresh it for a little bit, uh, Yalong. You maybe can okay, start. sure. Okay, slowly people coming in. Hi, Mervin. Uh, Ying Peng is, <laughs> of course, with us. Vince is with us watching and more people coming in. Hi, Priscilla. Welcome. Good evening. Please share this, folks, with your, with your agents, with your with your own page because we will be going live or we are live already, but we will go, we will start going through some questions starting at 8 p.m. sharp. Tonight here at Facebook Live on the Cornerstone page, we're gonna talk about how we build productive agents. Again, hi Priscilla, welcome. Make sure you mention it to your team. Hi Grace, a very good evening. We had an amazing interview this afternoon with Grace where we talked about the law of vibrational giving was a really great topic, but unfortunately only for people inside of Cornerstone. Now we have a very special evening where we do everything live on the public page. And I'm so excited we got these two guests here with us getting started in to talk about how we build productive agents, especially in a time where we are today, where it's not easy to be a productive agent during the MCO and whatever is gonna happen in the future. We have really the top two specialists with us today and we're going to talk about how did they actually get to that point of building a lot of productive and performing agents. So getting closer to 8 p.m., only five minutes left. Again, guys, try to share this with your groups. Try to share this on your own pages. Get as many as people on board. And then slowly we will get started very, very soon. Yinpeng, everything good with you? Yes, everything's great. Are you excited to get started? Yes. That's good, that's very good. So everything, everybody slowly, people are coming online, making sure that we also share it here from our sites to get everybody online. And slowly people are coming already up to 30 people, that is okay. And I'm sure when the clock hits eight o'clock that will double very, very fast. So today with us, Wong Yao Long and Yin Peng talking about how we build productive agents starting at 8 p.m. sharp. Hi everyone, good evening. How many people do we have now? Uh, we are 30? getting close to 
uh, 30 people right now, but like I said, we are still a little bit early. Usually people are used to the fact that we come right on time or sometimes maybe even one or two minutes later. So we still have four minutes to go. So let's give them a chance to come on board. In the meantime, we're also sharing it in our important groups. Oh yeah, okay, it's already been done. So that is already great. Tonight we're gonna to talk about, hi Jennifer, welcome. Um, going to be a very interesting session here tonight with us. So as we get closer to 8 p.m., three minutes to go. Shall we agree that we start exactly at eight? These are actually, all three of us are quite punctual people. We like to always be on time. I know Yaolong likes to be on time. Yin Peng is never late. Right, Yin Peng? <laughs> <laughs> start, starting never. from this year, he, he, she changed. She, yeah. she thought it's very punctual now. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Now, I, I can see from your laughs that I was I was right. So uh, never, never late. And I also tend to uh, sometimes also be one, two minutes over time, but that's okay. That's okay. Okay, welcome, Constance. Welcome, Carol. Hey, guys, share this to your people. Share this to your groups. I think there's some really brilliant information coming out starting at 8, 8 p.m. So start sharing this. Uh, create a, uh, a watch series. Put this into your own page. Put this into your groups. And we will get started soon. Kin, Kin Meng, welcome. A very big welcome. We're starting at 8 p.m. sharp. Make sure that you share it with your group. And we have some great questions prepared for you. Working very hard. Oh, some love and laughs and likes coming in right now. So that is great. Going up to 40 people already. So we will be growing quite soon once we get to, <clears throat> once we get to 8 p.m. Two minutes to go. Again, starting sharp at 8 p.m. talking about how we build productive agents. Already shared to my own page and Ignite group. Thank you, Mervin. That is Mervin always on top of his game, right? Making sure that his group gets all the value possible. Hi, Agnes. Again, hi, Quarrel. Growing, of course, we're always growing, right? Again, we are doing a breakthrough today with two very special guests. I think one of the first Facebook live sessions here on Cornerstone. So. And I'm very sure after this one, many more to come. So one minute to go, and then we will get started. Hi, Kelvin. A very good evening to you. Make sure also you share it with your group. Eugene, very big welcome. And we're getting close to 50 people already. And somebody texts through Cornerstone. Good luck, guys. Well, thank you. But... We are well prepared because we have some top people here with us today at Cornerstone. Alexander C., my partner, wasn't my face on the poster. Yes, it was on the poster because we needed a handsome guy to uh, do some additional promotion, making sure that we also attract the young ladies for, the, for, this, uh, for this event, Alex. So you know how it works, right? Good evening, Calvin. Hi. Hello, everyone. Caroline, good evening. So... Let's slowly get started. So guys, we are up to 55 people in this group. Yao Long and Yipeng, do you think that is a good number to get started? Yes, I think we can start now. Yeah, sure. Okay, so because I think people are already getting very tired of me talking all the time. So let's start letting you guys talk a little bit more. But would it be okay if I start with a little short introduction? Is that okay? Yes, please. Yes, okay. So ladies and gentlemen, a very big welcome here at the Cornerstone page. If you're watching as a Cornerstone member, you, the people that you'll be seeing tonight are no strangers to you. But if you're not part of the Cornerstone group, then of course, we would have to do a very short introduction knowing who we're talking about. My name is Taco Heininga and I will be, uh, let's call it the host for tonight. But this tonight is not about me. It's about two special guests that we have with us today. Uh, one of them is the managing director of Cornerstone. The other person is the head of sales within Cornerstone. And we are so fortunate that we could convince them to come live with us during their busy schedules, because trust me, they are very busy at this moment. So getting started, let me introduce you first, Mr. Wong Yao Long. Mr. Wong Yao Long is managing director at Cornerstone and is already in the real estate since 2005. He has been a, a real estate top negotiator three times and even was able 
to uh, reach the level three times to become a million dollar real estate uh, agent, what they call the million dollar real estate rooftop. Uh, outstanding leader. And since five years ago, he started the agency Cornerstone Estates. Uh, what was rewarded multiple times and keeps re getting rewarded, the most influential rewards that they got was most innovative firm. Uh, three times they got the residential firm of the year and two times the excellence agency. Also through the arena, they have been chosen to be the best real estate marketing uh, idea award for Malaysia. So I think this uh, gentleman, Mr. Wong Yao Long, has quite a few things to share about how an agency should be run and Specifically, how do you get actually uh, a high performance agency going on? So very good evening to you, Mr. Wong Yao Long. Thank you, Taku. Thank you for this uh, wonderful introduction. Yes, of course. So before I get started, because I think the first question will go to you, uh, Yao Long, let me just introduce also uh, the, your partner in crime, uh, Ms. Yin Peng, Yin Peng, <laughs> head of sales. Uh, uh, quite a few years in the real estate, uh, five and a half years already in the real estate, awarded top rookie in 2016 by the MIA. And shortly after she started actually to run the listing and marketing department for Cornerstone, a very interesting position uh, that has uh, really elevated a lot of productivity within the company. Uh, before that, there were uh, uh, she started the company with only two people in the listing department and together with her partner and mentor, Carol Young, she was able to now get up to 14 people really focused on the areas, Desa Park City, TTDI, Bandu Tama, and Monte Chiara. And still she is expanding like crazy and also recruiting like crazy. She calls herself a, res a residential sub specialist, mostly for the high residential market. And now she is, again, like I said, fully focused on building a team in the sub -sales. Uh, specialized in listings, marketing, and of course, also selling. So a very good evening to you, Yin Peng. Thank you, Taco. Hi, everyone. So both of you, you know, the main reason that we wanted to do this interview, of course, and, we're, and while I'm introducing you guys, we're getting over 80 people already in the group. So that is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. Mr. Wong Yao Long, I think many people are wondering, you know, uh, you have been in the real estate a really very long time. And you yes, have so I, many I achievements uh, as in the introduction, right? And five years ago, you decided to start Cornerstone. Why did you decide actually to start Cornerstone? But Taco, before I answer your question, right? You, you come from uh, Netherlands. You have been here for a few years. Do you know like how much the, the agent they are making a year in Malaysia averagely? What do you think is the numbers? The, the average... Uh, yeah, the average income of the property agent in Malaysia. Wow. Maybe I want to ask the audience also, like, how much do you think like Malaysia uh, average agent are making a year? Average income. Wow, that's such a good question. Uh, I know there are some top performers, but I, I know also a lot of people struggle in the real estate. So on average, I don't know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, 50, 70,000, 80,000. The, the average in Malaysia is about fifty to 60,000 a year. Wow. But, but the top 10%, the top 10% of the top agents, they make probably a few hundred thousand a year. Some could even make above one million. So if you're talking about average of fifty to 60,000, that means the bottom 50% of the agent, probably they are struggling in the real estate industry. So... I joined this industry 15 years ago, since day one until now. I see a lot of people are struggling. I also see a lot of people as, uh, uh, left the industry. So the reason I want to form this uh, Cornerstone Estate, I want to provide a platform. I want to provide a platform to develop agents to be the top performing agents. That's mean uh, I want to focus in terms of training. I want to focus in terms of turning them to a uh, high productivity agents. Like that's mean our average shouldn't be about 50, 60,000. I think if a person quit a nine to five job and come into this real estate market, they want to achieve something, right? They want to transform their family. They want to have different lifestyle. They want to have better life. So I think as a, personally, as a business owner, I think it's our responsibility. When people come into this real estate industry, we must make sure they succeed. They, they are doing well. So I, my, it's my goal to ensure like this platform can help agents 
to be one of the top productive agent in Malaysia. This is, is my goal. Yeah. That, that is why I want I set up Cornerstone Estate. Wow, I want that, to help people to be successful in the real estate industry. Wow, that that is that is that is uh, quite quite an interesting thing, and and probably also a very challenging thing. We will come back to that a little bit later. But let me just go to to the other person here on this call to to Yin Peng. You know, Yin Peng, you also had a you know quite interesting career already in the real estate. Uh, let me just start by asking, you know, why did you decide to join the real estate and? And can you explain a little bit to people here on uh, on this on this live session what it really takes to be in the industry already so long? Thanks, Tapo. Well, actually, how I started was um, I was in corporate for a really long time. Uh, well, long as in I was there for a good six to seven years, and uh, doing the nine to five, and I felt really stuck for a really long time. I couldn't. I was doing you know say six. 70, 70, 80,000 a year. And I felt like I couldn't, I couldn't go above. And I felt like there was this ceiling and every year I would just wait for um, my appraisal and I was just waiting for a promotion or I would just need to explore a new company to, to improve my, my income. And I felt I wanted to be in control. But of course, to start your own business is a huge risk, right? If I did F and B, that would be a huge like uh, output from my side, investment on my side. So that's how I thought. Okay, maybe I'll start doing real estate um, because I wanted to be in control and I wanted to do something whereby if I put the extra effort, then I can see um, the the input come in, that effort being paid off. And. Super. Yeah, and so then I started at uh, Cornerstone with, with Yaolong. And I feel like how I've lasted this long, actually when I joined Cornerstone, I think it was just the start of when real estate started to slow down. It, uh, it's about almost six years ago, right? So there was a huge boom and everyone was doing really well. And then when I joined, there was sort of a time where it was in a way started to slow down. Of course, it culminated to where it is today. It was started to slow down. But I didn't feel that at all. Um, I was very busy. And I think Yaolong and through Cornerstone has really given this good platform for someone like me that has no experience, no knowledge, zero, like really zero knowledge in, in real estate, just coming in and to jumpstart my real estate career. And through this, this platform, uh, what we call effective business unit that, that Yaolong has started, I started to see my income grow. So the first year you do the hundred thousand, the second year is the two hundred thousand, and you keep growing. And today, I I have the capacity to build a team. Never in my dreams that I thought I can do that, but I think it's through this platform and leverage correctly and effectively that I've been able to grow despite um, the challenging uh, times in the real estate industry. Wow. So one thing, yeah, yes, I still remember like I met you seven years ago, right? <laughs> Your mom introduced you to me. Your mom yeah. is also a very successful real estate agent. Uh, I still remember when your first time you interviewed that time, <laughs> I remember you said this like, hey, every, every month my goal is to, if I can earn 10,000, I'm happy. <laughs> I think, right? I still remember you saying that. But hopefully, I think uh, Cornerstone, we, 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 we cannot help you to achieve your need of 10,000. We help you to achieve more than this. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> yes, I still remember when I first came, I, I thought to me, you know, I just said that, no, I don't ask for a lot. If I could just do 10,000 a month, I think I'm very, very successful. I remember when I first met Yaolo, and then now Yaolo always joked to me. So yeah, if you do 10,000 a month, then how I said, oh, I don't know, I really just scratch my head. <laughs> Wow! Yeah. Wow! That that is the, that that's a cool story, you know. Going all the way back when you joined Ying Peng, right, to the industry, and you thought ten thousand was a lot, but these days, you know, I also know a little bit what you're doing at Cornerstone. Uh, you're doing way more, and you're also helping a lot of other people do way more. But coming to to back to Yao Long, right? Yao Long, you have been in the industry for so long, and you like you said in your introduction, you have seen people come, you have seen people go, right? And you work with so many agents also now in Cornerstone. What would you say is the number one challenge most agents face in the industry? The number one challenge, I think in today's market, the number one challenge, let me think, facing by the agent probably is uh, no leads. 
or in other words, no clients. There's less client. Second thing, I think the agent are facing another challenge is the, the cost of marketing is getting more and more expensive. I still remember when uh, first 15 years ago or, or, or 10 years ago when we started to advertise in the digital platform, uh, not to mention their name, that time we are paying only 2,000 2, ringgit a year to sign up for a digital, uh, digital marketing platform account. And today, one year we are spend, spending hundreds of thousands just for the to, to advertise to advertise. Can you see the cost? Can you imagine for a new person who are newly joined this industry, even though the senior one, they're also facing uh, the cost escalating too high and very, very hard to sustain. Third thing, as yeah. you know, I think nowadays you throw stone everywhere, also agents. The market also very competitive and you need to be good in all areas in order to close a case. You see, uh, traditionally agents, most of the agency, the practices agent, they run the business. Now, I, I think we want to focus in the secondary market. We want to talk about more on sub-sale market. Agent run uh, the sub-sale market mostly like a room ranger. You see, as an agent, what do we do? What do we do with Jinping? As an agent, when we come, yeah. First thing we need to come in, we need to gather listing. We need to inventory, right? Listing is those houses, uh, product that are available for sale. So first thing we need to gather all the listing. We need to make a lot of calls. We need to talk to the owners. We need to meet up with them to, to, to get the listing, to get the inventory. After we get the inventory, what do we do? Then we need to do marketing, right? We need to reach out. We need to advertise in the iProperty, Property Guru, the age. We need to advertise through the Facebook. Uh, we also need to send out flyers, cold calling, everything. We need to reach out to the market. Otherwise, you don't have the clients to come in. After that, then we do qualifying. If after the advertise, if there is a potential clients, they look at advertisement, they like your properties, they give you a call, you need to qualify them uh, to understand their need and requirements. And then you set appointment to, to do a presentation of the property to them. So if you're lucky enough, if the purchaser, they like the property, they make an offer, then you're negotiating with both sides. And then subsequently, you prepare the paperwork to, to do the closing. After that, you need to follow up with the with their loan, everything. You see, the whole process is too very, very long, right? And 80% of the time, the agent, what are they doing? They are doing a lot of preparation work. They are doing a lot of operational stuff, right? The paperwork, the operational stuff. And only 20% of the time, only 20% of the time, they spend on what? They spend on engaging with the clients and, and close the deals. So I think in this kind of, uh, the traditional way of doing this business is, con is, is going to be very tiring, especially now uh, if, you, if you want to do everything on your own and, and then you need to be good in all areas in order to, to close a case. So I think these are the, another challenge that are facing by the agent. They don't have enough time. They need to focus in so many areas and, and also they need to be good in all areas in order to be a successful agent. So these are the, some of the challenges I think feel faced by the agent now. Not enough time, the lead, no, no client, marketing cost is getting more expensive. The, the com competition is very tough and, and, and they won't, uh, some, most of them would as a lone ranger, sometimes can be quite lonely as well. Yeah. Yeah, then those are some really good points. Yeah, I think that that, that really sums up really the, the, the biggest challenges in the real estate for sure. So maybe Yin Peng, you could you could elaborate a little bit more on, on that failure rate, right? We know that a lot of people don't make it in the real estate. You know, some people say that, you know, over 80% of, of people that join the real estate won't make it through the first eight months. Why, why do you think there is such a huge failure rate? Yeah, I think it's precisely because of, of the reasons that, that Yalong has given, you know, especially in this competitive market, you can't, you cannot get by with, with being the jack of all trades, master of none. You really need to go deep and you really need to focus, right? Focus not just in area, but focus on skill. So through, through this system that we have at Cornerstone, what we do essentially is that, I like to say is divide and conquer because we always 
focus that when you go into one area is about conquering, right? You at least can have 60-70% market share in that area. But in order to do that, you need to have the division of labor, right? Everybody needs to specialize and focus. So we leverage on each other's strength. And I think that's why outside a lot of people struggle or they feel that it's such an uphill battle because you're one person alone. They're trying to do everything. It's, it's an impossible task in today's market as you get in cost of marketing is doing up. Market is so extremely competitive. So why not we band together? And I've seen firsthand, I mean, I myself, right? I, I, I'm in the system and, and we've gone along um, to do this. And I find that all of us just focus what we're best on. And then we can leverage on each other and it becomes, the deal becomes that much faster. You do more and you capture more. Although, yes, some people say, yeah, then you're just asking me to work that much harder. But it's not that. The point is that when you have volume, then you can conquer. When you conquer, you have sustainable income for many years to come. That's the, the beauty of sub-sales, right? For you to farm comfortably 10, 20, 30 years within that area. Wow. But it's only through a, a system, a systematic way where everybody can work as a team that you can really farm in that area and sustain that market share for as long as possible. Really, really, really interesting. You know, I, I just to pick up on a, on a few things, right? You, you, you talk about a system, right? And, uh, and you talk about teamwork, right? So yeah, long, you know, you have been doing Cornerstone for, for five years and, and let's go to, to some solutions, right? We talked about the challenges. Uh, what I know, because we have spoken a lot with each other and what I see in the market, you have built one of the most productive agencies in Malaysia. How, how uh, were you able to do that? Uh, I think it depends on the, on the team book. I, I think let me share with you, uh, because... We, in, in Cornerstone, for our sub sale we have this effective business uh, model. So we don't work alone. We work as a team. Okay. How this uh, business model is born, I think uh, when I first started, I do everything on my own. Like any other agent, I do everything on my own. I go get this thing. But initially, it's still okay. As market getting more and more competitive, uh, and then it's very getting tough and also tiring to do things alone. So... Like uh, I entered this industry in 2005, during the first two years, I was also struggling, not enough sales to come in. But by the third year, uh, in 2008, where the subprime crisis, many people also face, hey, subprime crisis, market is down, but in Malaysia, it's not affected a lot. Only six months, we were affected by subprime crisis. But during the crisis time, one day, one day, one of the, my business uh, owner from Edmund, he, he mentioned to me, you must always see the positive, even though in a negative situation. So, so the crisis is opportunity. So during the crisis time, instead of, instead of cut down my advertisement, I increase my advertisement. So that's why I, I able to penetrate to Desa Park City. So the time I start, my sales start to grow. In third year, I managed to get 500,000 and continue to grow from after, after that. So at one point, my sale reached at the ceiling, right? There's so much one person can do. I reached about 700,000 in terms of commission to 800,000 a year. It's very, very tiring because uh, every day you need to go out there to show the time the property price is about five to 600,000 in order to do 800,000 a year, 800,000 in terms of commission a year, is, you need to close a lot of cases, especially rental is quite, uh, is, is also, uh, a lot of, uh, how to say, for, for a lot of uh, small little things you need, need to handle. And I don't like to do all these small little things. And I, after that, I also get my wife to come in to help me to, to handle all the rental cases so that I can focus in, uh, in these sales. So after some time, because the building after 2008, the property sector started to boom. We can see a lot of transitions. Sometimes one month, my wife can... My wife, Carol, she will also close more than 10 to 15 cases of uh, renter, but I only focus on sales. I like sales transaction only. So I managed to close about, sometimes it can be up to 8 to 10 cases. Imagine every month, two of us, and we need to handle more than over 20 cases of uh, transaction. It's quite tiring. So then I talked to my CEO. I also talked to the founder of my previous company, uh, David Ong, and also... At the time was Gerard Cole. Gerard Cole was the Redfield CEO. 
So I mentioned, how do I break through myself? How, how do I continue to grow myself to the next level? I, I don't want to limit myself just doing 700,000, 800,000 a year. I want to do more. So, but what is a way? Because each of us, we have limitation, right? There's so much time we can do. There's so much we can do a, a month. So he mentioned, because Gerard Cole, he, he came back from Australia. He said in, in Australia, there's this uh, effective business unit. One top producer, sometimes they can have a seven or eight PA. One PA handling, calling the owner. One PA handling to open the door for the client. One handling, handle paperwork. One, one PA can handle the advertisement. So I started to think, hey, maybe this, is, this could be a good idea. And very kind, the company also support me during the time by providing me PA. So I get one PA, I get, my, I get my first PA, then I have a second PA, then I have third personal assistant, okay? But the, the, the sales continue to grow, continue to grow, grow until three of us or five, uh, four or five of us also cannot handle the volume. So I thought to think maybe it's time to, to build a team. It's time to build a team. Then I start to have a team about, I think uh, about 10 to 12 people. Can you imagine 10 to 12 people in one year, uh, we can do more than five, we can transact, we can transact 250 million to 300 million worth of property, just 10 to 12 of us. Wow. And, and we can bring in the commission uh, about 5 million to 6 million a year. That means our average per person, our average per person is about 400,000 to 500,000 a month, uh, a year, a year. I think this, this business model works. Later on, we refine the, the business model. So now uh, we have one, you see, as I say, as an agent, you need to do everything from listing, gather, gathering listing, meeting up owner, doing advertisement, uh, calling, finding client, closing, negotiating, everything on your own. So I think now we have, by, by having the effective business unit, we kind of de departmentize, right? Some people are good in meeting owner. Some people are good in advertisement. So if you ask me to go, to, to go out there to take good photo, it will never happen because no matter how I take the photo, it still look, doesn't look nice, right? I also not, not good at uh, putting up, upload my advertisement and doing all the rental and paperwork. I think in, in today's market, we need to work as a team. So we kind of departmentize. So now we in Cornerstone, we have one department just focusing in getting listing. So every day their job is to getting listing. So, and, and we have also a department just focusing in uh, doing lead generation. That's mean we do a lot of advertisement, sending out flyers, doing I property advertisement, property guru advertisement to make sure all our advertisement, they always appear on the top so that there's a more visibility, more people can look for you. So, so as an agent now, as I said, previously, if you work as a loan manager, 80% of your time, you are spending on the preparation work, right? Getting listing, uh, getting advertisement done to, to do a lot of callings. But is it, it are, this all, are all this activity able to help you to generate revenue? Taco, by doing listing advertisement, do you think can, can help you to generate revenue? Only listing advertising, no. I think you also need to, you need to, to sell it itself, right? Yeah, you need to sell it, right? Yeah. So, but it, but so you only can generate revenue after you if you if once you get the buyers or you you close the deals. Correct. So I feel I feel that as an agent, your time uh, should be focusing on focusing on the getting the buyer, focusing yes. on building rapport with the client, focusing and and closing the deal, focusing on follow up with the clients, right? That is yes. that is a that is a core activities that an agent should do. That means the listing side, the lead generation side, we are someone, we are a supporting team, which is Jim Peng is handling now. Their department is going to assist this agent to do all these things so that their focus can, are, only, are only on the closing part. So that's how we can have very consistent sales. That's how our agent now, they, are, they, are, they, they can be very focused on the productive activities. That's why our productivity, uh, our productivity per person is way above. I think now averagely in Cornerstone, our average in our average agent they bring in commission to the company is 132,000. I, I believe this is one of the highest in the market. So I this season really work, you see. Now as a, now I'm solving a lot of their problem. First thing, they don't have the worldly listing, right? 
if a new person come in, sometimes you don't have enough products, you have you you are you will find very hard to get a purchaser, right? If you don't have product, let's say like for example, if you only have ten products in Cornerstone, we have thousands of inventories. Which one do you think the purchaser will choose to go to Taco? Wow, yeah, of course the the, the one with the most inventory, right? Right. So as a as an agent, sometimes you also feel like, hey, I come in, I'm new here. Even though senior, I so hey, generally the new leads are so tough. In Cornerstone, we, we provide leads to our agents. We have one department focusing in, in getting the leads and advertisement so that we can help our agents. At least they can, they can have closing, hopefully every month. So, so this is how the effective business unit it works. I think now, uh, Yim Peng is in charge of this department. I pass a baton to her. Uh, she, she can explain to you, I think, clearer like how this, how this the entire thing works. Wow. I, uh, for, first of all, before we go to Ying Peng, I mean, th this is mm. truly rev uh, revolutionary, right? I mean, a, an effective business unit, you call it, uh, yes. that is basically splitting the departments up and letting them specialize on, 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 on certain levels within the agency, right? So you have a listing department, you have a department that does the marketing, then you have a department that is focused on the, on the buyers, uh, that, that must be a well-oiled machine, but you, you were saying just now, right? You have over thousands of listings, right? So Yinpeng, seeing that you are in charge of this listing department, right? And, and deal with a lot of sellers, owners in the subso market. How are you able to handle so many people uh, and help them sell and rent out? I don't, Taco. I have a team. <laughs> we work ah, as a team. That's right? the secret. That, okay. Yeah. So no. Well, when we first started, of course, it was just uh, me and another colleague, right? So we we started uh th that time the department we, we didn't really think much, right? We just said okay, we know that we wanted to divide out in this manner, so we started, and then Yang said okay, I think it's time we up our game and we we try to provide. He, he, every day we look at ways to improve our services to the agents. So that's how he said, hey, why don't you consider like recruiting, like bringing in more people to help you? Because I found that I couldn't cope by myself and another colleague, two, just two people handling one area is a lot of work, right? So that's how I started to bring in, uh, I had Jocelyn. Jocelyn uh, started with me very early on. Um, then there was Jesse who came in as an intern. And then there was Scott Howe. So the few of us, we started really, um, that's how I started to, to be really build and increase and improve the inventory and expand out. You can't do this alone. There's no way. Um, you need a team and you need uh, everybody working together uh, through a system in order to, to build. And then on top of that, we also do the, the, the marketing bit, the advertising bit, which is like what Yalu said, is the most painful part, getting listing and talking to owner. I mean, that's, that's the fun bit, right? You, you go out, you, get, you interact, you can close deals. But the most painful part is doing the, 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 the digital part, you know, the mass marketing. You have to go and upload the photos like unit by unit. Then the unit gets sold, you got to pull it down. Then you got to monitor your, your ads. So we, uh, as a department, we cover this to lift this burden, this mass marketing burden off the agents so they can fully focus on what Yalong mentioned, the most important and productive part, which is the prospecting, building rapport, going out to seek new clients, new, new business opportunities with the client. This is what will bring business and bring sales to, to you as a real estate agent. So by, by dividing this and having this team now that we have of 14 of us and still expanding, we're looking to really grow um, we find that yeah, people people who join us usually within the first six weeks, if 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 they, they go through the steps, they can start closing immediately. Wow. So so the fourteen of you is only the listing uh, department, right? Listing and marketing, yes. Wow, wow, that's truly amazing. Like fourteen people only focused on getting in listings, dealing with sellers, dealing with owners. Just one team that is just just making sure that these owners and sellers are being served. And then obviously, you know, Yao Long, I think, uh, I mean, you, you were throwing uh, some numbers out there. I hope you don't mind me that I repeat that, but you were saying that mm -hmm. your agents are making 130,000 on average a year. So you were just yes. saying at the beginning that that in Malaysia, the average is about, what, what did you say, 40, 50,000? 
probably probably fifty to sixty thousand. Fifty. So so you're do your agents are doing more than double than that, right? Yes, definitely. But my aim is to at least to bring everyone uh, to one hundred fifty thousand a year. Wow, that is my, my my goal. Well, I I would sign for that for sure, right? But I think yeah. that the, the the key for the key thing is uh, like so you're saying that this effective business unit is is if if I look at it and it's such a strong teamwork, right? That that people that would join the agency that would work with you, right? They they basically walk in this oiled machine and they just have to start learning how that system works and they they can start closing pretty fast, right? Yes, yes, pretty fast. I think we have a team member coming in, like a lot of young people coming in. Uh, within a few years, I think they can become one of the top producers. Priscilla, Mervyn, they are one of the good examples. Uh, Priscilla only joined us a few years ago. And then today, is, she is one of the, our top producers. Not only she become a top producer, now we also develop her to be to be leaders. Under her, there are probably more than 10 agents now. So we, we are not only building the personal sale, we also de develop a, a, a person to be a, a great leaders. Very nice. Very good. So, um, you know, in the meantime, just, just to give you guys a little break, right? Uh, in the meantime, a lot of people have joined us. We, we have over 100 people watching, people from within Cornerstone and people without, uh, from out Cornerstone. And if you have just joined us, we are together here with uh, Wong Yao Long and Yin Peng, you know, talking, of course, about the real estate industry and specifically we're diving deep into how does Cornerstone get so many people, uh, so many productive agents, right? They were just sharing with us, you know, the challenges and on top of that, you know, how they are solving that right now with their, what they call the effective business unit, what I, what I really find fascinating, right? Where, where you really start working as a team together to, to serve all parts of the, of the industry. So uh, guys, I mean, they're going to be here with us for an, a, another couple of minutes. We'll be here another 15 minutes. If you have a burning, pressing, important question to the, the, these, the, these top performers, right? And, and, and uh, such experienced people in the real estate, you can ask it in the comment box. Feel free to ask a question. I will, I will select them out and, uh, and I will ask them for you. So I'm giving you a chance right now to go into comment box and, and write down your question. But before the question comes, in Peng, I have a question for you. Mm, Can you maybe, yes. you know, Yao Long was explaining about, you know, the, the overall picture of the effective business unit, right? Can you give some examples in Cornerstone uh, of people that very successfully leveraged on the effective business unit and they were able to build a very successful career within Cornerstone? Yeah, for sure. Um, so not just which later I'll go on to the, the successful top producers on the buyer side. But over on the listing side, I also have people who have been with me for some time and they've done really well in the real estate too, despite, um, you know, the market so-called, a lot of people say slowing down, but it's certainly, uh, every day is a busy day for us. Jessie, for example, uh, she started off as an intern um, she really fresh, fresh grad came out. She didn't know anything. She couldn't even speak like English when she first joined, which is real, a real hard worker. Always want to learn, and um, she joined us as a as a lister. And uh, I think she has seen her income grow. Of course, her first paycheck, she said, "Hey, you think is this correct? Uh, why, why so little? Uh, I only got this amount. <laughs> Not it wasn't even a four figure amount." I told her, "Don't worry." As a listing agent, you will see the money. You just go on. You are. You will have consistent income. From there, she start to see her income grow. And this year, she just bought her, her home in a prime area in Klang Valley for herself before the age of thirty. And she's grown so much as a listing agent that today she also has a team of three people under her care. So she's also going down the route of of growing the team. And I encourage everyone on my team also you know, to, to grow because we're looking to expand and, and they are equipped. And I think within this system, it's easy for them to, you just have to teach the people to navigate in the system, to leverage on it. And of course, on the buy side, like what Yao Long mentioned, it's funny, right? You, you, I, I also put down uh, Priscilla and Mervyn. I think when Priscilla, I still remember when she first joined us, she was so eager to learn and she's so hardworking and really focused, really focused. And she was focused on like any lead or any possible client that came her way. She worked really hard to serve. And I'm so happy to see her, her business grow. You know, first year she was doing about 150 and then it grew to 300. And today she and Mervyn collectively, they lead 19 people. Mervyn, I remember when he, he, he first started, when he joined Subsale, 
he told me like first year, I just spoke to him, I said I've forgotten. Yeah, his first year, he just made 4,600. And <laughs> so I just had a good laugh with, over that. And then he started to really learn um, the effective business unit and to learn to grow his business. He shot up to 190 and today he's hitting the 300 and they're leading the team. And their team members are also doing really well. Uh, Lucas is also doing really well, just nine months, but also closing consistently every month. And I think that all of these people that I mentioned, and so many more, I, didn't, I don't have a chance. If I mention everybody, it will just take the whole night. Uh, is that what I can see from them is, and our retention rate is very high because what I feel is, as long as they know, they, they navigate within this system, it's very evident. Everyone, I'm sure all of you on here in the sub sales, you know that how your business has grown just by learning how to leverage on this system. Very good. Sorry, <laughs> my, no my children lock, lock on the lock. No worries, no worries. Um, uh, that that's so great. That's some great examples there, Yim Bang. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, I also, yeah, know that, that there, there's a quite a few people that 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 ex do extremely well at at Cornerstone. And I just want to uh, say, you know, uh, also great job by you guys as leaders, right? By taking these people on board, giving them the confidence, I guess, right? In 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 giving them the the long-term picture, right, of getting them on board, teaching them, because in, in Cornerstone, there's a lot of, you know, uh, guidance from, from the leaders, I guess, in, in helping them to build that, uh, that, that through, right? Um, so, Yao Long, right, I, I'm getting a few questions uh, through, through, the, through the comment box. Is it okay if I ask you one of those questions? Yes, please. Yes. So, so uh, Agnes Fung is asking, uh, what are the three main things to focus on as an agent? As an agent in, in, in to, and now and the MCO uh, period. You know what? Let's go to the MCO period later. Let's just talk in general. What should an agent, MCO or not, anytime, any year, what should they be focused on? Okay. I, I think uh, as an agent, the main focus, first thing is, uh, I'm talking about myself. My main focus, first thing is a discipline. So every day I make sure there are certain routine I, I, I follow. There are certain daily tasks I need to follow. For example, every morning I make sure that I wake up at 7 to 7.30. Then I have to focus on uh, uh, the daily activities. In the morning, I go into the office. I make sure I reach office on time. I think discipline is one of the key things for agents to be successful. And after that, I as an agent at the time, I always go out there to search to look for the uh, first thing I do is to search all the advertisement, to look at all my advertisement, to make sure my listing. I'm talking about when I was an agent, right? These are the things I focus. Look all the to focus on the, my advertisement to make sure all the listings are up, to make sure, look at my competitors' advertisement as well, then to see what are listing that I don't have that I need to gather all these things. At the same time, I always focus on the lead generation. I think lead generation is also very important. If you don't have lead, then you cannot win the battlefield. Okay. Another thing is a prospecting activities. So after that, I need to uh, build rapport in my, with the owner as well as a, as a, as a buyer. These are the three. Uh, discipline, discipline, lead generation activity, and prospecting activities. These are three main focus. Very nice. That, that is really, really good. You know, Yao Long, in the meantime, you know, some other comments are coming in, right? I think some people were triggered when you said, uh, when you were with your old agency, you were making seven, 800,000 a year, right? Mm, so people yes. are actually asking Yao Long, uh, how can I make seven, 800,000 a year as an agent? Is those the, the same three disciplines or do you say, okay, no, you need to do more for that? You need to do more for that. You need to have a right strategy. Now you need to work as a team. Individually, unless you work very, very hard, you are the super top one. Uh, otherwise, to reach 700,000 or above 1 million nowadays, uh, it requires teamwork, right? Everyone has different strengths. Okay? We, need to, we need to leverage on each other's strength to go an uh, effective team so that if everyone works together as a team, I think we can be more productive in yes. today's world. Yeah. yeah, very good, very good. So much agree with that. Yimpeng, I have a question for you, right? Because now let's go a little bit to the to the to the current day, right? To what is happening today. 
obviously the, the the whole world is a little bit upside down right here in Malaysia. We have a, we have an MCO going on, unfortunately extended again until the 14th of April. Uh, when I go to the internet and I, I look around, you know, I see a lot of agencies, real estate agencies slow down. They sit at home and they just wait until, until this time is over. Right. What are you now specifically doing with your team? Right. And, and are, are you still very active with your clients? Extremely. I just, um, past few days, uh, uh, we've been, I just told my team, we just need to focus on prospecting, prospecting, prospecting. This is the best time for us, especially for the newcomers. I said, this is your time to catch up, to play catch up. You've got, now actually we're running out of time. We only have two weeks. You've got only two weeks left to catch up. What are you doing? Are you catching up or are you sitting down? This is your golden opportunity for you to run. And I tell the listing department, we meet every day, um, sometimes 10 minutes, sometimes half an hour, just to go through what are our achievements for the day. How many calls have we made? How many updated listings have we made? How many owners have we reached out to? And for the newbies for in, uh, at the buyer team, uh, I get them to do calling, to build rapport with uh, owners because owners are always the buyers. They are the ones with the money. And I tell them, build that rapport every day. Just do your prospecting. Call and build rapport. This is the best time to hone your skill because you don't, you, you you're not gonna sell anything at the moment. There's no pressure for you. It's to build that rapport. In that, that that's the a true salesperson, right? It's to understand your client so that you can meet their needs. So that's why I've been encouraging everyone. So we have quite all of us. Hopefully, you know we're we get busier. I told them this is your chance to do catch up and training. We still do training every day, of course, in a new format via Zoom. Um, but you know. But now more so than ever, I think training is so important for all of us because it will not be business as usual. After this, this, this time, right, we really have to sit down, hone our skills and prepare ourselves, you know, so that when business resumes, we are ready. We are ready to go out there and start closing. So, so wow. I think you are literally the only person that, that has said to me that, that uh, we only have two weeks left until this MCO is over, basically. You're, you're actually hoping for more extension of the MCO? So <laughs> no, contact. I'm not saying that. I'm going crazy. You know, you can't put a salesperson at home for too long. You know, like salespeople, we are built, we are hunters, you know, we're meant to go out. But but I see it as, as and I just told my team, my listening team today, I said, I'm so worried, like, are you all catching up? You know, I, I don't want you all to miss miss this chance so these two weeks the, the two weeks that staff is so precious make use of it to really reach out and and build the rapport and build the relationship with the client yeah 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 i understand why well, that's such a good point right really taking that opportunity to to catch up with all those listings with all those people and seeing how you can serve them at this at this challenging time right so that that is really that is so amazing that you're taking that opportunity so you know, we, we are getting, you know, ladies and gentlemen, we're coming a little bit close to an end. We're not ending yet because we have a, we ha mm -hmm. I still have a, a question left, of course. But, you know, if you still have a question, if you want to ask it now, we have a few minutes left. So please put it in the comment box. I would be happy to ask it. We're here right now with these very two special guests here with us of Cornerstone, Mr. Wong Yao Long and with Yin Peng. So uh, I get a message from Neo. He says, great sharing, Yang Yilong and Yim Peng. Thank you, Neo, for joining us today. So hopefully also everything is good. But your side also, I see some other agencies joining. So Yilong, now that the whole world is watching, well, maybe not the whole world, at least all of <laughs> Malaysia is watching, right? Yeah. The whole of Malaysia is watching. I have, I have actually a burning question to you, right? Because you okay. are a specialist in this real estate market, right? You have been in the market for so long. Uh, you've seen the market coming up and down and, and going always. What you are the head of the agency, what would you advise not only your own agents within Cornerstone, but all agents in Malaysia at this time, what they should be, what should they be doing during this MCO? What should they be keep doing to keep moving and to get some productivity? Okay, I, I think I, this one, I spoke to my team members a lot. I think uh, as mm, every day now we receive a lot of news about COVID-19, about market crash. I told my team members that you spend 5% of the time now to get updated about COVID-19. And 95% should be focused on those more constructive, more productive activities. 
whatever you whatever you news you you read about COVID nineteen or you share about COVID nineteen, you you cannot change it. Okay, let the government do their duty. Let the let the relevant authorities they do their work. All we need to do is to stay at home and 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 do more to spread more positive energy to people around us. I think now it's time to we also need to focus uh, a a positive mindset. Okay, we we whatever the whatever happened out there we cannot change, right? The only thing we can change is our mindset. So real estate is not something that is rocket science, right? So we need to go back to those activities that they can generate us the sales. Uh, over the last one week, we focus a lot of motivation, getting our people together. I think that phase is over. Now I, I, I want our agent to focus on more productive activities. There are still, uh, there are still transactions that can be done during this time. Uh, last few days, we have team members, our team member, they still managed to close the close to a few cases through the phone or sign all the document digitally. Uh, their transaction can still be done. So I want our people to focus on prospecting activity and lead generation activities. Every day I make sure they do 30 calls and 20 follow-up uh, uh, calls with the clients. By doing this, I will say uh, they still have chance to close a case or they will, they will start to have a, a group of potential purchases to light up. When market recover, the lockdown period is over, we, can, we will see the sales start to come in. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are some of the advice. I think one, one more thing very important is uh, for those who think might have the cash flow issue, try to get some, some soft loan from the banks. I think now the bank also provide a lot of uh, uh, loans to the... To the, to the to ordinary people like us. So for myself as a as an agency owner, I do the same. So because we don't know how long this thing going to last, can be one month, can be two months, can be three months, can be six months. We must be able to sustain and survive through this period. Uh, so to get a, a, a cash flow in to have a sustainable power is very crucial at this time. Wow, that, that, that's some really good points. I think that definitely a lot of agents will take up that advice very, yeah. very good points there to, to, to keep moving, right? Hey, as we are coming to an end of, of this session, right? I, 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 first of all, you know, I'm, I'm super grateful and thankful that, that we can have this session and that you can make some time here to, to talk with all these people or to share your story with all these people. But Yinpeng, you know, it seems like, you know, you, you're, you are still growing, right? If anybody out there, right, is saying, hey, uh, I wanna get busy. I want to see what I can do in the real estate. Are they still able to, to, to join Cornerstone? Are they able to join a, a listing department? Yes, both the listing and buyer department were expanding rapidly and we are looking for people who want to grow their business and who just want to learn uh, about real estate. To, I mean, you can come and, and have a chat and we can explore and see whether you know it's something that you think you can embark on. Yeah, for sure. For both the listing and the buyer department in sub-sales, we are we're expanding. We're expanding. We're, we're looking for people, people with the same mindset, people who want to grow and yeah. Okay, very nice, very nice. Well, at least we, we will make sure that we will share that information that if they're interested, right? For people that are uh, looking into the real estate, right? Because I think something like an effective business unit could be very relevant to them. Um, yes. Yeah, Long, I, I'm getting a last question in here, right? I think this is a good, okay. question, uh, good question to ask you, right? We. Uh, I, I also have been fortunate to, to do a lot of training with, uh, with Cornerstone uh, to provide some training. So I've been very close with, uh, with quite some members. And I think one of the strong points of, of Cornerstone is, is the culture, right? A very strong culture, very close team together, right? Um, yes. So um, how do you, what do you think attributes to this success, right? How, how were you able to build such a kind of family culture within Cornerstone? I think that like uh, for the last few days, may, a lot of our team leaders share this. We have this uh, giving culture. We don't want to share our experience without expecting any return uh, from the from the people. So probably this one we 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 kind of force everyone together. Like a, we we don't mind. We are always go out there to to share and to help other people. 
that's so beautiful. That's so great. You know, okay, well, gifting culture, that is really nice. Well, that, that really brings us to an end of this session, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We First of all, I would like to get uh, to thank our, our guests here, Mr. Wang Yao Long and Yin Peng. Thank you so much for, for being with us today. We really hope we can do this again in the future because I'm quite sure that more people would like to hear from both of you and uh, not only how to become successful in the real estate, but also you know, uh, uh, hearing from your stories from the past because I think that can be very relevant for people to help to understand what it really takes to to go through a journey like that in the uh, in the real estate, right? So, Ying Peng, anything last things that you would like to share? No, I think that, that that's it from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, uh, uh, Thanks, Long, anything you would like to share? Any last things? I think that's all from my side. Stay healthy, everyone. Stay safe. Okay, Be stay safe healthy. And stay healthy. Stay yeah. healthy and stay safe. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us with our two amazing guests. Today, we discussed how we build productive agents. We will do, be doing more of these live sessions in the near future. We will definitely promote who our next speakers will be. For now, we have spoken to Yao Long and Yin Peng. Thank you so much. Have a great evening and see you next time. Bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.